Hi everyone, thanks for viewing this second video of my short series of structural optimization problems. My name is Mike van Telgen and today I'll be discussing uh, the design of a, a bridge consisting of a triangular meshed tube structure. While looking for inspiration for this project, uh, I came across this picture of the Hart Hill Pedestrian Bridge near Glasgow. The bridge was designed by Bureau Happold and spans uh, 70 meters across a motorway. And another very similar bridge by Bureau Happold is the Greenside Place Link Bridge in Edinburgh. The designs of the Hart Hill and Greenside Place Link Bridge are very clearly connected. Both these bridges consist of only several steel sections which revolve around the length of the bridge. Since the, there aren't any vertical ring sections intersecting these steel sections, uh, a triangular mesh is not created. However, in this example, a triangular mesh can be seen, and this is the Corporation Street Bridge in Manchester, which was designed by Hodder and Partners. A nice feature is that uh, the bridge constricts towards the center of the span, so possibly one or more compression and tensile arches can be achieved. Using this information, it struck me that a combination of ideas taken from these case studies could easily be investigated in Grasshopper. In addition, we, if we can optimize such a bridge design, possibly a lot of money could be saved. Considering the five million pound cost of the Hart Hill Bridge, this seems like a very good idea. However, in this case study, we, we will only be looking at optimizing the structural mass of the bridge instead, since this is much simpler to do. Still, a bridge like this would be a rewarding experience, certainly when crossing from one side to another, especially when the sidelines are unhindered you could feel the intensity of the constricting mesh. A structural advantage of the design is the formation of tension and compression arches, and this may lead to an efficient use of material. The height of the structure can also remain limited. An obvious disadvantage is that the nodes may be difficult to achieve. Looking at the grasshopper model, we can see that the ideas of the case studies are incorporated and some additional ideas are added. The triangular mesh in this example is formed by drawing and rotating 25 ring sections and we can find several points on these circles using the divide curve component. And then by using lists we can draw a triangular mesh between the points of the circles. The revolution modifier decides how many times a single curved steel section revolves around the structure. In a model it is possible to set the span length of the bridge and by changing the number of segments, we can add and remove the aforementioned circular sections. Adjusting the subdivision variable influences the number of steel sections that revolve around the structure. The width change variable dilates or constricts the structure. This feature scales the appropriate ring sections according to a curve which is non-visible in the model. The diameter variable determines the ring section diameter at the supports. The mid support location added the possibility of using three supports for the bridge uh, and this variable influences the location of that support where zero would be the left support and one would be the right support. Originally I made a bridge using only two supports but in that case you cannot have the two bridge constricting and dilating at the same time. In the case of a tubular bridge I think it would be best to use only one section size for the whole bridge. Using only one section prevents errors and this makes an already difficult problem significantly easier. As with the previous video, a line load is used and then redistributed to the nodes of the structure for convenience. For optimization purposes, an upper and lower bound are again provided. And this time, both the unity check for the section choice and the allowable node displacements are considered. The maximum allowable node displacement is found by dividing the length of the span by 300. So let's start up the optimization. The video has been sped up several times since the actual process took two and a half hours. I fixed the span length to 120 meters, the tube diameter to 6 meters, and the location of the mid support is set to 0.3. A line load of 20 kN per meter span is assumed which seems reasonable considering the design is for a pedestrian bridge. The other variables are free to be chosen by Galapagos. I forgot to mention this before, 
But when I say optimization, I don't actually intend to find the best solution of all time for a structural engineering problem. What I tend to do with this technique is to find a reasonable solution within the field of possibilities as stated by the Grasshopper model and within a reasonable amount of time. You can imagine that for an actual bridge design many other factors should be included and an optimization may not be as simple or quickly obtained as is demonstrated here. Looking at the results we find that at least the first four solutions favor designs consisting of rings divided into six sections or as of called many model subdivisions. It also seems a good idea to constrict the structure towards the centers of the spans. The number of segments varies between 21 and 24. Quite possibly this value is determined by buckling of one of the compressed sections in the model. So there could be an optimum between the section's buckling length, the compression load and the structural mass of the total structure. The number of revolutions of the sections around the structure is found to be best when set up to about one, meaning that only one revolution is attained by a single section. Looking at the masses of the different structures, we see only a small difference since all the masses vary between 50 and 55 tons. So in this optimization problem, I would advise the inclusion of costs, which can be determined by the cost of the steel and the labor put into fabricating the structure. So for today I'm going to leave it to that, and I'll provide a download link to the grasshopper definition in the description on YouTube. I'm still looking for inspiration for the third video, so if you have any ideas, please contact me by email and tell me what you would like to see optimized in Grasshopper. Thanks for watching.